There are a lot of videos on the internet right now that are misleading a lot of you and we're here today to set the record straight. This whole thing is not as complicated or nearly as scary as a lot of people are making it, whatever their motivation may be for doing that. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina and what I'm about to share with you today is relevant no matter what part of the country you're in, although we are going to look at some things that we've been doing in South Carolina for a very long time that at least in our case, just add to the fact of just how not dramatic August 17th has to be for the real estate industry and for you as a potential buyer. Now, first, let's just recap what the big changes are. And then by the time we move our way through this video, we circle back around to this. What we're going to realize is these are the changes. So how do they practically affect everything that you're going to experience, whether you're a seller or a buyer in a real estate transaction? Because a lot of what's being focused on is purely speculation and aren't even actually relevant to to the actual changes that have been made. Now, the two major changes that officially go into effect on August 17th as a result of the NAR settlement are these. One, real estate commissions can no longer be expressed and advertised through the MLS or any IDX feed that pulls this information directly from the MLS. Number two, real estate agents will need to have a buyer's agency agreement signed before showing a house to a prospective client. Now, the language in both of those things that I just said is really important because people are picking apart and botching the changes that were actually made and causing a lot of fear in potentially people like you. So today we're going to debunk the myths, clear up the cloudiness and muddiness of the water and excommunicate the nonsense. Now, the first thing that's important to understand is the way that all of this came about and what all of this is a result of is poor communication within the industry. And this really implies communication that was coming from real estate agents in transactions in various parts of the country. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this video is not specialized or centralized to South Carolina. However, some things that we've already been doing and practicing in the state of South Carolina are relevant to this video. And an agent such as myself in South Carolina cannot appropriately communicate the important things that need to be communicated to you in this video without highlighting what we do here in the state of South Carolina. This is a disclosure of real estate brokerage relationships. It is not a contract. It is a disclosure. Now, we are among 17 or 18 states, I believe it is, that have been required to have these signed at first substantive contact with any prospective client for years now. In our case, we have been doing this. So what that means is any real estate agent that you may have worked with for years now in the state of South Carolina, if they're doing their job correctly, should have had a conversation with you at that first real conversation about real estate, about brokerage relationships, or should we say agency, explaining to you what the agency relationships are and disclosing the option for you to hire the brokerage firm to represent you in an agency relationship or to remain a customer and represent yourself. So for a long time now, that should have already been going on in the state of South Carolina. The reason why that is relevant for you and I and all of us is because what actually has changed. What has changed is due to this settlement, real estate agents, not buyers, are required to have a signed buyer's agency agreement in place before showing a house. Now that is new. What you just saw is a disclosure. It's not a contract, but it goes over the conversation of what signing a contract implies and would actually look like. This new stipulation does necessitate a signed contract. However, it's not nearly as big a deal as many people on the internet are making it out to be. Assuming that you've already had the conversation about agency, which is why I mentioned it and that we've been doing it for a long time, this is going to help a lot of people across the country to start practicing what they probably should have already been doing to begin with. Assuming you've already had that initial conversation, it makes the conversation of the agency agreement much smoother and easier to have because you, the potential consumer, have already been educated about agency relationships. So the key thing that you need to know about the buyer's agency agreement before we get to the commissions part of it, which is the 1B big part of this subject, is that the agency agreement can have any terms on it that you specify. It's a negotiable contract. There are blanks on the contract that can be filled out to your specifications and desires. Remember, it's the real estate agent that's required to have it signed. In fact, in a lot of places in the country, a lot of showings are scheduled through certain apps such as Showing Time. And it's actually going to ask a question to real estate agents that are representing or potentially representing buyers, do you have a buyer's agency agreement signed to show the house? I can tell you that real estate agents across the country that may have in the past been prone to not do their job correctly or were willing to cut corners are not going to be as quick and willing to do that now at the risk of having penalties such as fines and or suspension of their license, they are going to want to have that signed agreement before they show you a home. But here's the thing. The terms can be anything you want them to be. 
is completely negotiable. So to save a lot of you agents and consumers a lot of time, hopefully you're seeing this video and understand going into that conversation, you don't have to panic and freak out. Make the terms for 24 hours. Make the terms contingent upon that specific address or group of addresses that you want to go tour that day. This will give you an opportunity to A, see the property that you want to see, and B, build some sort of rapport or relationship with that agent and then determine if you're going to want to move forward with them in the purchase of your home. Here in South Carolina, we've already been working on implementing these changes even before they really lock in as official. And I have already done this and it has not been a problem at all to tell a prospective client, listen, we have to have a buyer's agency agreement signed to show you a home. We set the terms for a short period of time and it's no problem, no pressure, very low obligation for both sides. Because hey, in some cases, agents may decide that there's certain potential clients that they may not want to work with for various reasons. So it gives both parties an opportunity to build a short-term working relationship and see if continuing to work together makes sense for both sides. That's pretty fair. That's pretty simple. So I would suggest, especially in our state, when you look at the disclosures of agency agreement that we were supposed to already be having signed at first substantive contact, and then when you cut through the weeds and see the simplicity that getting the buyer's agency agreement agreed upon and signed in order to show houses can really be, this is really not that big of a change from the way that we already conduct business in this industry. Number two, probably the biggest part in the buyer's agency agreement that's always a matter of discussion is the commission section. Now, when it comes to commissions, there is a very big change. But there's also something that's not changing at all. And the problem is a lot of folks on YouTube out there are making entire videos and focusing on a change that is the part that actually has not changed and not talking nearly enough about what actually has changed so that you, the consumer and other agents out there watching their videos can be adequately prepared for the kinds of conversations that they're going to need to have with their potential clients moving forward. Here's the big news flash and the debunking of the myth. Buyers were always responsible for their agent's commissions. Shocking alert, your buyer's agent was never working or going to work for free. Commissions are always negotiable, but our South Carolina buyer's agency agreements, and I'm sure across the country, I would imagine, all clearly stated, and this is a conversation that every agent should have been having very clearly or to the best of their ability to communicate to their clients to say in very clear letters on the contract, you buyer are ultimately responsible for the commissions that are paid for the services rendered by your agent in this transaction. That is not a change. That is not new. So all over the internet, there's headlines and video titles. Buyers now have to pay commissions to buyer's agents. You were always responsible to pay your agent. It is a complete straw man conversation. Now, frequently what happens is the commissions get paid out of the transaction, meaning that listing agent A lists a home with seller A and they determine a certain amount of commission that seller A is going to pay listing agent A. And then they agree that a certain amount of that percentage will go towards a buyer's agent should a different agent other than the listing agent bring a buyer to the table which is completely reasonable and logical. And then what would happen at the closing table for you, Mr. or Miss Buyer, the agent representing you, the buyer's agent, would be paid out of the proceeds from the commission split that was determined in the contract in the listing agreement with the listing agent and the seller. But if for some reason the commission wasn't able to be paid in that fashion, you signed a buyer's agency agreement even then, at least in the state of South Carolina, that stated that you were always responsible to ensure that your agent that rendered their services to you for the buying of the home was compensated regardless of where the commission came from. And so that has not changed. What has changed is this. The offering of commissions to a buyer's agent that would come out of the proceeds at the closing table used to be advertised in an MLS for every listing that was uploaded. And so Mr. or Miss Buyer, your agent, whenever they were doing their house searching for you, was able to see for each listing the amount of compensation that was being offered. That has now gone away. That section is now gone from the MLS across the country and any website that gets its feed directly from the MLS, such as Zillow or Realtor.com, any place like that. 
but listing agents can still advertise the compensation that they're paying through their own private websites or through their signs in the yard. And obviously they can answer the question if a buyer's agent should text or call them. So the change is instead of the commission being advertised and broadcast on a broad level, commissions are now narrowed down and being advertised on a case to case basis. But why should you care? And what does this mean for you? We'll go back to your buyer's agency agreement that did not change, at least from this standpoint. You are ultimately responsible for your representation's commission, as it should be. Again, this is nothing new. But now your agent does not have visibility to see on a broad scale what commissions are being offered. What this means on a practical level. Forget all of the speculation. I'm big on practicality. Sam, what's this really actually going to look like? Mr. or Miss Buyer, you are house shopping. You've decided to consult a realtor because you want the reach and extension that they have to put them to work to help you search for the home of your dreams. Each home that you send them or they send you that you're interested in, they are going to need to reach out to the listing agent and ask what the commission being paid is as part of their inquiry into the home. That was not something that would have been the case prior to August the 17th, but it will be now. And why does it matter now? Because that leads to the third big change that's not actually part of the settlement, but is going to be super important for all of you buyers out there to start practicing in your home searching journey. The reason why is that if the commission that is being offered does not match the amount that was agreed upon, in the signing of your buyer's agency agreement, then there is going to be a difference that you owe to that buyer's agent. And remember, commissions are negotiable, but this is all going to be murky and in the dark until we know exactly which house it is that you're going to put an offer in on to purchase. Then we'll actually be able to look at the math and only then. So what does it mean for you, the buyer? What do you need to know moving forward in this new landscape and what are your options? Should there be scenarios that come up where you need to pay your agent and representation out of pocket because the sellers on the particular home that you are looking to purchase were not willing to offer compensation that matched your agreed upon amount to your representation, then you will have typically the option to have concessions that are made by the sellers possibly as part of your negotiations that can be applied towards the compensation that you owe at closing. But in order to know how much you can possibly negotiate and ask for in your contract offer, it's going to be more important than ever to know what type of loan you have qualified for, being that different loans have different amounts of compensation. And so there can be a lot of variables of math here, but typically conventional is going to be an allowance of up to 3% of concessions, FHA and USDA 6% and VA 4%. Now, again, there are variables and it's going to be on a case to case basis, depending on your financial needs and circumstances coming into the contract. And so that is why it is more important than it's ever been. It's always been important, but it's more important than ever that as you move into the home buying process, you need to secure a pre-approval, that is you have spoken with a lender and fully understand what you qualify for and what are the financial parameters that you are moving within. Because now, depending on what commissions are being offered on a house-to-house -house basis, in conjunction with the agreement that you signed and agreed to to pay your agent, there's going to be some math that is involved to figure out what your situation will be on a house to house basis. It is not complicated. It's not scary, but it is important. So I would say the biggest change for you buyers out there that I would recommend is as you move into the buying transaction process, more than ever, speak with a lender, a local lender if possible, and secure your pre-approval letters so that the type of loan that you've qualified for and the parameters financially that you're working within can be discussed with your realtor because this is going to help them to ensure that your transaction is the smoothest as possible and that you're taken care of on that side to have the minimal infliction out of pocket expense up front in the transaction. Now, I want to tell you my final thing, which is my speculation, and then let's circle back around to what has actually changed and make sure we understand what has not changed at all because there's a lot of false information and fear mongering going on on the internet and we're going to clear all that up but my speculation is that not much is going to change in this area we'll see how it plays out but if you follow the train of thought and you look at what the changes actually are everything begins with the listing agents with their seller clients so i as a listing agent am not having any different conversation than i had two three months ago in that we're going to discuss commissions, which are negotiable, 
and the brokerage will discuss what they charge and why for their services. And then if the seller agrees to it, there is an understanding that we are offering a portion of those commissions to a buyer's agent in their effort to bring a buyer to the table and secure a closed transaction. Because the fact of the matter is, I don't represent every potential buyer across the country. So the odds that someone is going to come to the table interested in buying your home that is already represented by a different real estate agent is pretty high because there's not an agent out there in the country that represents every potential buyer for your home. At best, they could only have a very small percentage of the buyer pool in the entire nation that could be interested in your home or the world for that matter, because buyers come from all over the place, right? So Mr. Seller, Miss Seller, what are we going to offer to a buyer's agent? Listing agents across the country are going to have that conversation. And I suspect that in most cases, sellers are still going to be willing and even desire to offer compensation to a buyer's agent why? Because they want to sell their home. That's why the home is on the market. So it just makes the most sense. Time will tell how that goes. In the event that we see an increase in scenarios where sellers do not want to offer compensation to buyer's agents, just know it's going to help you out a lot to understand what your financial situation is in terms of your loan so that you know how much concessions are made available to you. Because in these scenarios where sellers aren't paying commissions, they're going to see a lot of contracts that are going to come through asking for concessions that can be paid to buyer's agents because you have buyer consumers in the marketplace and their representation, which are real estate professionals, have to be compensated because they do not work for free. I don't know anybody that does intentionally work for free, but there's some math that's going to be involved in that to make sure that you are getting every opportunity and advantage that's afforded to you within the terms of your loan. So to recap, what has changed? Real estate agents are required to have a buyer's agency agreement signed before showing a house. Real estate agents are bearing that requirement. Requirement. So the ones that are doing their job correctly and not cutting corners, and there are going to be a lot of things put in place to ensure that everyone is being held accountable to the way that things are supposed to be done for the promotion of the consumer's welfare, they're going to be asking you to sign an agreement. This does not have to be strenuous or complicated. They should have already explained the agreement thoroughly to you so that you know what you're signing and the terms can be anything you want them to be. You don't have to sign a 90 day agreement right out of the gate and you just met this agent five minutes ago through Zillow or Realtor.com. Put 24 hours on it, give them an opportunity to demonstrate their professionalism and their ability to perform on your behalf. And then if you find, you know what, I think I could have a good working relationship with this agent, then just extend it out throughout the life of whatever it needs to be based on your circumstances and let them work for you to find a home and to get the home of your dreams closed. It's very simple. The second major thing that has changed is that commissions can no longer be advertised through the MLS or any of the IDX feeds that pull their data and information directly from the MLS. And what that means is there's going to be a little bit more legwork for real estate agents and for buyers to have to do their homework to look at what the compensation offerings are on each particular house to factor that into their purchase. And it's not as big as it's made out to be on the internet. Why? Because buyers were always responsible for their agent's compensation. That is not new. So what has not changed? Buyer agents still have to be compensated. And again, commissions are negotiable. But the idea that buyers will be responsible for the compensation to their agents is not new. That's the point. And just as a bonus myth that we'll debunk, I haven't seen as much of this lately, but the other bonus myth is the idea that, well, now home prices are going to go down. Home prices may go down because of different factors in the environment of the economy and things that are going on. That remains to be seen. But this is most likely not going to cause home prices to go down. And it's simply something you just have to logically think about. If you're a seller, and you say, well, there's an opportunity for me to maybe get an advantage and pay out less commission than I used to. Are you just saying, well, I'll just leave that money on the table? Or do you see that as an opportunity to put more money in your pocket? The house is $650,000. There's now $15,000 less money than I possibly have to pay, or I can get away with not paying and still sell the house. So do you leave the 15,000 on the table or do you put it in your pocket? You probably put it in your pocket. You probably don't leave it on the table because you say, well, why would I leave it on the table? I might as well pay it and expand my potential buyer's pool, possibly. I think that's another myth. So with that being said, be careful going through the internet, letting Whoever these various people are, whatever their profession is, some are real estate agents, some people are doing other things, maybe they're trying to get views, whatever the case may be, scare you 
and or tell you a bunch of misinformation. The only things significantly that have changed in the practical experience of your home buying transaction is you're going to have to sign a buyer's agency agreement with an agent if they're going to show you a home. Secondly, commissions can no longer be advertised through the MLS or any extension thereof. Therefore, when you signed your buyer's agency agreement with your representation, there's no visibility until directly inquiring to the particular home that you're interested in if the compensation that the sellers are offering to your agent matches or exceeds the amount that you have agreed to pay. All this does is make for more conversations. Some people out on the internet speculate that this means that sellers will no longer be offering compensation to buyer's agents across the land. I, for one, will believe that when I see it. I do not expect that to be the case. So there's no need to hit the panic button. However, I do think it's reasonable to suspect that the amount of occurrences where sellers are not offering a compensation that matches or exceeds what a buyer has agreed to pay their agent could increase, although I don't think it's going to be a landslide across the board. But in the event that there is an uptick in the amount of occurrences where buyer's agency compensation is not being offered, there are concessions that are allowed to be negotiated and asked for on behalf of the buyer when submitting an offer. And so it will be important to understand what type of loan you've qualified for and will be leveraging in the purchase of said home because the concession amounts vary from loan to loan. So the big takeaway is please make sure you consult a lender at the beginning of your transaction process so that you have visibility going forward as to what your options are going to be as we move forward into the inquiries and begin to learn what type of compensation, if any, is being offered on a house-to-house -house basis. Now, the final thought, and this is the big problem with all the junk that's going on on the internet. Do not, I repeat, do not let the conversations that are being had that do not match what you've seen in this video, because what we did in this video is look at what actually changed. Tell me where some of the scary things you've heard match what is actually changed. Not speculation, but the actual changes that were made to the way that this real estate industry practices business. Do not let any of the rhetoric going on scare you into this mentality of buyer's agents are bad people and I want to stay away. Here's what that looks like just so you know, you're now going into transactions with no representation. You were always responsible for compensating your agent. Buyers across the land were always ensuring that their agents were being compensated for their services rendered, whether they realized it or not. Now, they should have known how it was going. Bad communication is what got us into this boat. But it doesn't mean that the circumstances changed any. Rules have been put in place. Legislation has been brought down that enforces, or should I say legislation has been brought down that facilitates an environment to ensure that that communication is in fact happening. It's a shame if it wasn't across the land in different places. But the bottom line is the practice of real estate itself, in essence, has not changed. So don't allow something that has not changed to scare you out of representation. If you bypass a buyer's agent and you go directly to a seller's agent who has agreed to be paid X amount of commission for the listing, their commission most likely is not going to change just because you came without representation. So now the commission exchange between the seller and the listing agent is still the same, most likely. The only difference is you're now in the transaction buying the home with no representation. I saw one agent on YouTube that was saying that in New Jersey, in their open houses, they're actually going to have a form that they're required to have that explicitly states, hey, just so you know, prospective buyers, this agent that's here hosting this uh, open house is representing the seller and their fiduciary duties are strictly to the seller. What they're saying to you is just so you know, we told you you're not represented and your best interests are not represented in this transaction. So Mr. or Miss Agent may be ethical. They may be a good person and they may exercise those morals and ethics and values. But make no mistake, when it comes down to it on paper, you're not represented in this situation. Do not, I repeat, do not let these changes to our industry scare you out of consulting and hiring a brokerage to represent you as a buyer. That is a bad idea. If you look at all of the circumstances 
and you come away with the conclusion that not hiring a brokerage firm to represent you is the best decision for you personally, then so be it. But please make sure that you actually do the due diligence to look at all of the scenarios in play to be positive, that is in fact the best route to go. Because for many of you, that would not be the course of action to take, I humbly suggest. Real estate agents like myself are going to carry on with business. We'll list homes, buyers will still come onto the scene, practice will still continue in the real estate industry. Home buyers are the ones that are gonna potentially be most negatively impacted in this scenario. Here's the bottom line. We've gone over the changes that were made. You clearly have seen that a lot of the rhetoric you've heard are not actual changes. In fact, some of the stuff that people are saying is gonna change and causing panic is what we've been doing the entire time. There is no change. Do not let the actual changes scare you into going into the home purchasing process. Home ownership is a wonderful, beautiful thing that not everybody gets to experience. It used to be a fundamental part of the American dream. If you find yourself in a position where that is on the table and an option for you, continue to explore your options as you normally would. Consult agents. If you want to see a home, it's very simple to construct a buyer's agency agreement that allows you to do that, that doesn't have to be strenuous taxing or terrifying and move forward as you normally would understanding that a good agent is going to represent you and lay out all the options and explore all the options in cooperation with your lender to ensure that you're taken care of and put in the best position. The goal is for the consumer's welfare and therefore for consumers to be educated and informed in how real estate transactions are processed and how commissions and compensation is paid and dispersed. And hopefully this video accomplishes that. And hopefully the rules that have been put in place will accomplish and facilitate that as well and hold people accountable, but it will not cause people to pay more than they need to pay or to have unnecessary burdens placed upon them to simply buy a home. And so look, I hope you found this helpful. I tried to keep it as brief as possible. Hopefully we accomplished that and you were able to stick around to the end of this. If you did find it helpful, please give the video a like. It's a very small, simple gesture, but it really helps us out a lot and we really do appreciate it. If you're in South Carolina in the PD region or in the Myrtle Beach area, my contact information is down in the description. Reach out to me if you would like to speak in more detailed fashion about all of this stuff that's going on and how it applies to you and your specific situation. I look forward to talking with you and seeing if we can help you out in your scenario. And in the meantime, I wish y'all all the best in your real estate endeavors. Y'all take care and we'll see you on the next video.